Hi everyone, my name is Joey Fight. I'm the founder of thephysicaleducator.com and today I'd like to share with you a spooky Halloween themed chasing and fleeing game called Ghostbusters. In build one, the teacher will begin by setting up the playing area. To do so, they will divide the area into three sections, with a haunted house on either end of the playing area and the middle section serving as the street. In each haunted house, the teacher will lay out hoops that are three to six feet apart from each other. There should be enough hoops for each student in both of the haunted houses. The teacher will then divide the class into two groups, the ghosts and the ghouls. The ghosts will go stand in the hoops of one haunted house while the ghouls will stand in the hoops of the other. Waiting for the appropriate cue, ghosts and ghouls will be attempting to move from house to house as quickly as possible. When the teacher calls ghosts, the ghosts quickly run across the street and stand in an open hoop in the opposite haunted house. When the teacher calls ghouls, the ghouls do the same. If the teacher calls ghosts and ghouls, both groups switch houses as quickly as possible. This continues for a few switches until everyone is warmed up and the teacher is confident that the students can move safely throughout the playing area. For build two, the teacher will set up an ecto containment unit on the side of the street. They do so by creating a rectangle of cones and lining up a set of green, yellow, and red spots within the cones. The teacher will then select a few students to be Ghostbusters. Each Ghostbuster will receive a proton pack, which is a full-size pool noodle. The Ghostbusters role is to tag ghosts and ghouls to send them to the ecto containment unit. They do so by gently tagging the fleeing players with their pool noodles. Ghostbusters can only tag ghosts and ghouls on the street. When a fleeing player is in a haunted house, they are on base and safe from being tagged. When the music starts, the ghosts and ghouls begin to freely run across the street to the opposing haunted house. Each time a ghost or ghoul does so without being tagged, they earn one Halloween focus point for themselves. Fleeing players are responsible for keeping track of their own points. When a ghost or ghoul is tagged by a ghostbuster, they have to do a few things. First of all, they reset their Halloween focus points to zero. Then they raise their hand to indicate they've been tagged and they make their way to the ecto containment unit. The ecto containment unit uses a traffic light system. If a player is the only player in the unit, they stand on the red spot and have to wait. When a second player arrives, they ask the first player to move to the yellow spot and then take their place on the red spot. When a third player arrives, they ask the second player to move to yellow who then in turn asks the first player to move to green. When a player has moved to the green spot, they may return to the game. Play continues until the teacher calls the end of the round. When they've done so, fleeing players will be invited to showcase how many Halloween focus points they've earned during the game. If they've earned 0 to 5 points, they perform jumping jacks. 6 to 10, they perform crunches. If they earn 11 to 15, they perform squats. And if they earn 16 or more points, they perform push-ups. After the point totals have been celebrated, all points get reset to zero and the teacher selects new players to be the Ghostbusters for the next round. For build three, the teacher will randomly lay out spots on the street that will serve as ghost traps. Ghostbusters can make use of the traps by guiding ghosts towards them as they chase. Now the Ghostbusters have a few choices. They can tag players like they were before to send them to the containment unit, or they can guide them towards a trap. And if a ghost or ghoul steps on a trap, it's the same as if they've been tagged. This round tends to lead to conflict and other emotional moments, as the Ghostbusters and Ghosts and Ghouls tend to argue over whether or not a player stepped on a trap. Use these situations as teachable moments to remind the players of the conflict resolution and emotional self-regulation strategies that they've learned in class. To learn more about these, check out some of the links below. So that's Ghostbusters, a Halloween-themed chasing and fleeing game that can be broken down into three builds. If you're looking for more information on this game, such as modifications, related assessment tools, the grade level outcomes it focuses on, or if you just want to share your experience playing it with your students, be sure to check out the game page which is linked in the description below. Once again, my name is Joey Fight from thephysicaleducator.com. Thanks so much for watching, and happy teaching.